Butterflies and Moths, Part 3. As it flies, a butterfly is on the lookout for bright, the bright colors of flowers. When it lands, it checks for food with its feet. Butterfly feet can taste sugar, just like your tongue, except they are about 200 times more sensitive. Next, the butterfly uncurls a long feeding tube called a proboscis and pokes it into the flower to sip nectar. Nectar is a sweet energy drink made by flowers. It is the liquid fuel that a butterfly uses to keep flying. The butterfly will visit dozens of flowers each day, filling up like a car that needs to stop at every gas station. Down here the caption reads, a hair streak butterfly from Australia perches on a flower to sip nectar through its proboscis. Each flower only makes a little nectar at a time, so it will need it will not be long before the butterfly needs to stop again. In time, a butterfly will learn to recognize its favorite flowers and visit them more often. But some butterflies prefer other foods. Woodland butterflies often feed on tree sap. The blue morpho butterfly likes to sip juice from fruit riding on the rainforest floor. The males of many butterflies sip salts from wet soil and even animal dung to get the nutrients they need for mating. And some males are very picky about which type of dung. In Africa, they prefer the dung of meat eaters like lions and other big cats. Leopard dung is a favorite. Down here the caption reads, A blue morpho butterfly shines and shimmers in the rainforest of South and Central Africa. It is often seen flying along, along streams and in sunny clearings looking for a mate. Perhaps the strangest thing that some moths eat is nothing at all. The luna moth, for example, does not even have a mouth. It relies on food stored in its body from when it was a caterpillar. A luna moth will live for about one week, while other butterflies and moths live for two to three weeks. A few butterflies, such as a question mark and morning cloaks, can live for, up, for six to ten months. When winter comes, they find a safe place to sleep. Then they wake when it warms in spring. Down here the caption reads, A luna moth, which has a wingspan of four inches, is one of the most beautiful moths in North America. Its name comes from the Latin word for the moon. Lots of butterflies and moths end up being eaten by predators. A butterfly might be grabbed by a mouse, a lizard, or a frog. It might be snatched in flight by a hungry bird. Even moths are not safe at night. Bats are good at catching them. Some moths have ears on their bodies to listen for bats. A few moths have other, another trick. They have a special organ that makes a clicking noise to confuse a bat while the moth escapes. Down here the caption reads, A praying mantis may hide near flowers, waiting to ambush an unlucky butterfly. Butterflies outfox birds with their helter-skelter flight. It's hard to catch something that bobs and skips through the air. Butterflies may also have large spots on their wings that look like eyes. These eye spots confuse birds, which cannot decide which end is the butterfly's head. And if that doesn't work, a butterfly still has another trick. It can suddenly fold its wings and drop to the ground like a dead leaf. The brown underside of its wings helps the butterfly vanish into its surroundings. Of course, it's hard to escape a hungry bird every time. But even if the bird grabs a wing, the butterfly may still tear loose. Many butterflies have bits missing from their wings, yet still, yet they still fly. Down here the caption reads, A blue morpho butterfly blends perfectly with the dead leaves on the rainforest floor when it closes its wings. 
The round circles on its wings are eye spots which help confuse predators. When a male moth is not looking for food, he will search for a mate. He finds her in the dark by following her perfume she releases into the air. He smells it with his large antenna and follows the scent trail, even from a few miles away. A male butterfly may look for, a fem for female mates near flowers where they feed, or he may search along rivers and sunny trails swooping on anything that looks like a female. It might just be a falling leaf or even a bumblebee. It doesn't take much to confuse the male. But if it is a female, he will court her. Often he dips and climbs in front of her and sprinkles her with perfume from his body. If she is impressed, she will land so he can continue. He may shiver his wings, tap her antenna with his, or dust her with perfume. Then she will let him mate. The two butterflies clasp each other end to end so he can fertilize her eggs. Down here the caption reads, These swallowtail butterflies are mating. The female, which is the butterfly at the top, will soon be ready to lay her eggs. Next, the female will look for a plant to lay her eggs on, but it will not just be any plant. Her young may only eat one type of plant, so it must be the right one. Even then, she is particular. She wants the healthiest plant with the best leaves for her caterpillars. It will have to be growing where it is not too hot or cold or too wet. So she flies, searching here and there. When she lands on a plant, she kicks it. Special sensors on her feet will tell her what she wants to know. Does it taste right? Is it healthy? She may check for other eggs or caterpillars. If she sees or sen senses some, she will fly on. Otherwise, there might not be enough food left for her young when they hatch. She tests dozens of plants until she finds just the right one. Perfect. She lays some of her eggs and fastens them with special glue. Then she searches for another similar plant. Soon there will be more wiggling caterpillars. Down here the caption reads, When a cabbage white butterfly is ready to lay her eggs, she homes in on a mustard smelling chemical found in cabbage leaves. This is the same chemical that gives cabbage the bitter taste that some people love and others can't stand.